All right, hi everyone, welcome to uh, another video um, with me, Jason, the Screen Photographic. Hope you're doing very well. Um, now, my apologies, I haven't uploaded a tutorial video for quite some time. Um, we've had the tail end of the pandemic, of course, um, and I've been working on quite a large um, calendar project um, at the start of the year, um, as well as one or two other small sheets, which has taken up all of my time, so I haven't been able to get up to um, upload some of these tutorial videos, but I hope we'll get back to some. Uh, semi-regularity uh, as soon as we possibly can for you. Uh, so something different to what we normally do. Normally we look at um, GIMP and, and editing um, photos and that and, and yeah, adding one or two special features and bells and whistles straight out of the box. But today we're going to look at something else. Now those of you who've been following my channel for a while or know my channel for a while um, will know that I do a lot of events and um, a lot of music photography. Um, and I see many, many tutorials on YouTube um, for how to edit concert photography. Um, and they all seem catered on um, Lightroom and Photoshop, which is understandable um, because that's industry standard. Um, but many of, many of us don't use those software. Many of us um, look for alternatives. Um, and some people who do, you know, they do use Photoshop. They, they like these things like Darktable and GIMP um, alongside Lightroom. Um, just another feather in their bow, and why not? Um, so what I thought I'd do would be a fairly quick video, just showing you my process on how I go about editing music photos. Uh, and if you look here, um, you've got a number that I took at the Wild Pass Festival at this weekend just gone. Um, and if you've got any knowledge of concert photos, you'll see that colours tend to do strange things. Um, so you get to be pinks or greens, or uh, you shoot them in dark environments, you need high ISO, so there's often quite a bit of noise in an image as well. Um, so I'm just going to pick one of these photos. I'm going to work through what I do in terms of trying to get it web ready and sort of taking out some of the noise and the um, colour contrast and etc. You may do something different, um, or you may be new to this and you might find this useful. Um, but this is going to be very basic, it's just a brief overview, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the image we're going to work on, uh, and I've deliberately picked this for um, a couple of reasons. One is the colours, as you can see, um, they're a little bit blown out in numerous areas, particularly across the guy's face, uh, all his instruments, and uh, the lighting here. Um, I've done nothing to this image apart from compress history stack. Um, I'll do a quick contrast test before I went uh, live with this video. Uh, and also we need to get rid of some of this um, noise. Um, now, pay attention to these settings. This was taken uh, at f2.8. Uh, and if you want the um, lens information, um, it's here. So let's close that. It's a Tamron SP 2470mm uh, f2.8 Di. So it's 1 1 of a second, so we caught quite a bit of movement in it. A 3200 ISO, hence all the noise, uh, and f2.8. So we had the lens down to its widest possible setting. Um, we're not quite that amount of brightness the camera sensor can take. It can be pushed to 64,000. Um, 12, 8 you can have, but I probably wouldn't use that unless you really have to. Um, but to get that shutter speed is pretty good, considering we're looking quite a dark venue. Um, so we need to get rid of some of this noise, first of all. So I'm just going to shift these lights out of the way so you can see the pink in the face. And I'll zoom in a little bit for you as well. Just by rolling the mouse up and down, you can zoom in and out. And just by clicking and holding and moving left and right, you can move the image around. So we're going to name us in our GIMP tutorials. So the first thing we need to do is try and you know, bring down this horrendous pinkness here first. Um, so we'll go to our colour contrast. And we'll just drop this down just slightly. And probably the blues as well. And we'll get into the image. That's already looking pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> but we're not done, of course, because we mentioned about denoising. Um, now, Darktable has uh, a number of ways you can denoise. Um, there's a number of ways of doing different things in photo editing, and this applies to not just Darktable, but Photoshop, Affinity, Lightroom as well. Um, 
you know, it's astrophoto denoise. Uh, apply for some noise removal, best suited for astrophotography. That's obviously space and nighttime photography, which we're not doing here. Uh, you've got denoise profiled, uh, denoise statistics profiled on sensors. Uh, you've got raw denoise, which is probably um, a little bit beyond the scope of this video. It does say to denoise early in the pipeline, and I would recommend if you are using raw denoise that you do that. Um, this can be a little bit scary at first, um, and it's something that we might look at in another video should you want to do so. You can also use a contrast equalizer, and you can surface blur. Uh, and where you've got a little bit of noise, 4800, you know, I've just clicked on that. And that's done a reasonable job from a distance, it's not too bad. Um, but we're going to look at the noise profile in comparison and then decide which one we want to use. So when you open Denoise Profiled up, you'll find, um, as it said on here, that it finds a match profiled on sensors. Now, every camera is different. This was shot on a Canon EOS 750D, which works um, okay up until about 1600 ISO, and then starts to um, become very grainy um, and quite bad um, at high ISO. So um, you may find that you get a little bit of what I call waxy look, wax working, which you'll need to adjust um, as a sensor, as the software, the AI and the software tries to match um, to your sensor as best it can. Uh, zoom in into 100% and it's done okay. Um, zoom me out. And from a distance, there's no noise at all. So let's just contrast that. Let's just turn that off. There's quite a bit of noise in these colours across the face here. Turn it on again. What I might do is just drop the strength just slightly to about 0.8, just to ensure the sharpness of the image. Um, and we've still got a little bit of pinkness across the face here, haven't we? Um, so here's where we can come to the next stage of the edit, which is to go up here to the Colors tab. Uh, and we're going to go to our color calibration, and we're just going to drop the... Um, Colourfulness of the reds just a little bit. Increase the greens just a little bit. Drop the colourfulness of the blues just a little bit. I'm also just going to drop the brightness of the blue. The brightness of the green. These are all very small, very small increments. Just push the blues up a little bit more. Now, colour correction does exactly what you think it might do. Um, it tries to white balance selectively for blacks and whites, and it tries to colour correct in the areas that you drag it to. Now, where an image is perhaps too pink, too blue, too red, too whatever, you want to drag the white dot, which is for the highlights, away from the colour that is too much in the image. So pink, that will obviously be a bad effect. So with orange, you might get away with yellow, but you want to push this away. Usually for the diagonal corner to bring the skin tone back, which you'll see that we've done. And if you wanted to push the shadows to inject a little bit more different lighting into it, you can. And here's what a lot of concert photographers do. You'll see two lots of different lighting. Um, but that's close to the original lighting that the picture was taken in. You can have a bit more haze, push this whichever direction you want to do so. Um, I do take note of this though, um, obviously the more you push it, the brighter and more blown out the image will become. Um, also that's quite an unrealistic effect, so I will add a little bit of this pink lighting in. Um, okay, so we're not looking overexposed now, so let's go back to our um, history to remind ourselves of what we started with, I'll zoom in. So we started with um, quite a noisy, quite a pink image, a um, little bit washed out here. Um, one solid colour apart from this light up on the ceiling. Um, we have um, applied our denoise profiled, pushed our colour calibration to tie everything back in and make it look a little bit less um, garish. 
the color corrected of the skin tone. That's looking pretty cool now. Um, probably the last thing I do as well um, is maybe just look to put a little bit of haze removal on. Just get rid of some of this fogging. I may turn that off depending on if we blow out. So, oh, this tool here, if you're not used to it, you can see a number of icons down here. This one here is quite useful because um, it shows you where you're overexposed or underexposed. Um, you can right click to, um, it shows red and blue, but you can change it if you have color blindness issues. Um, you can change it across a full gamut, where you're overexposed to the luminance or saturation only or any RGB channel. I tend to leave it on this. Uh, it's a lot more accurate than it used to be in earlier versions of, um, of Dark Table 2. Um, and I completely forgot what we were going to do. We are going to haze remove, weren't we? It doesn't do too much. It blows the lights a bit too much for my liking. Um, so we'll do it another way. We'll go to our tone curve and we'll just drop this down a little bit. It's probably a bit too much. Let me just push this. Probably don't want that there. Let's reset that. Bring the stones to touch, push the brightness slightly, put them in tones, slightly push the shadows. See how small those changes were. It is noticeable within the image if we go to color calibration, we get a tone curve. And if you do decide that you don't like anything with all of these edits, nothing is destructive in dark table, you can simply turn it off. Uh, maybe find another module that works for you. We don't really have any local contrast. Um, although it's not looking too bad, is it? Let's just... Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Okay. And that's how I would... Um... Oh, I just crop it, sorry, as well. So... I tend to use a crop tool. There is another one you can use if you want to do any rotations in the image. It's cropping this way. Crop into the speaker here, the speaker deck. We'll leave this bottle of water in. I quite like that orange light up there. And there we go. And there you have it. That's how I would crop uh, and edit a um, music photo uh, or a concert photo uh, in Darktable. Um, now, this was a very, very brief overview, just showing how you can get rid of color contrasting and, and weird colors and make things look a little bit more realistic, as well as having a little bit of fun with the um, changing the reds that like we did in the original image. Something a little bit cooler, something a little bit more exciting. Um, that's just a quick way of doing it, so it was only brief. If you'd like me to um, do another one of these videos, going in depth a little bit more, spending a bit more time and going through a full start to finish work through um, leave a comment below like and share this video if we can get to 100 likes um, which I'm pretty confident we can with you guys and your help and support uh, then I will do uh, a fuller video explaining some of these tools a little bit more uh, as well as a further look at Darktable as ever you can download Darktable from the website all of this can be done straight out of the box. You don't need to add any styles like I have here, which do all kinds of crazy things. Um, and you don't need to add any um, looks. You could do these are color lookup tables. Filmmakers would be interested in them. They work in photography as well. Uh, and you literally can just pick any one you like um, and see the effect it gives you. I don't really like that, so we'll turn that off. Uh, you can get these free of charge online as well. There's lots of places you can get lits. Uh, and I can show you where to put them in um, Darktable in another video, how they work, and how you can apply them to apps to different types of photography. So if you are shooting concert photography, good luck. Remember, tips from myself are set your ISO as high as you possibly can. Um, you do want a high shutter speed to capture things like motion and movement. Um, but if that doesn't work for you, lower your shutter speed uh, and try and increase your F number. Um, get to the front, get those ang angles, have a lot of fun. Uh, put links to your images below. I've been Jason. This has been Screen Photographic. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Drop a like and a share, and I'll see you very, very soon for the next one. Just one final check of the before image and the after image. You take care of yourselves now.